What is going on everyone? Leon checking in and we're at it again with more content. And today we're here to talk about an Android app called Quick Cursor Pro, which should allow for improved one-handed functionality on larger displays, but should also help with computing with a wearable display. Now we also have other items to talk about in the future, which should help with computing with a wearable display, such as this Fossman mini Bluetooth keyboard, I'm looking to unbox and play with and cover in future content. Now the features that we're showing in this video, they are essentially productivity tools or accessibility tools. Either way you look at it, they should improve the experience when using that wearable display. Now when it comes to Quick Cursor Pro, there is a lot going on here. So this is going to be essentially an intro and I'm hoping to create more content covering this app. Now, for those who are interested, there is a free version of this app, but I'll be demonstrating the 599 Pro version. There's also the option to further donate to the developer if you wanna support them. All things said, let's go ahead and get into it. So to start the cover photo for this video, it shows the S23 Ultra being used with this application. And the application works very good on that device, but I wanted to demonstrate it on a larger device. So we have the Samsung Galaxy Tab S9 11 inch here, because in general it is larger and that makes it harder to use one-handed. So I'm hoping to show very good demonstration here by using this device one-handed. And I'll also be pairing this tablet and the application with the wearable display you see here. If you're listening in on the video, I have the Lenovo Legion glasses, but there are other wearable display options you can find on the market that should perform in similar ways. So I'm going to plug the wearable display into the S9 11 inch, or as I like to say, Jack in reference to Cyberpunk. And we are going to put on our wearable display. And I like these because it is a, a pretty thin form factor. They pretty much almost look like sunglasses or glasses with the minor exception that they are a little bit thicker because of the technology incorporated within them. But I think this is a very good solution if you're looking to compute, but you don't want to wear something big and bulky such as a MetaQuest or the recently released Apple Vision Pro. Now, it is important to keep in mind that those devices have a lot more features, whereas these wearable displays, these glasses here, they are going to be a lot more basic. You're limited in what you can do with them. But if you have the right tools, this becomes a productivity device as well. And I also wanna mention that everything you're seeing on the included screen recorder, I'm actually seeing in my vision. So we already have Quick Cursor Pro running. And again, there is a lot going on in this app. It is highly customizable. So again, I can't emphasize enough. I'm looking to create future content about the app just to cover all the bases and create more information. And I really wanna showcase this app because the developer has done a really good job. And I think it's important that we get the word out for developers creating this kind of stuff. So I'm going to move to the side here so that we can make the screen recording larger. And I wanna say that this application starts with what we call a visible tracker. And we can just move that out from the side. You can see it's this floating circle. It's got an opaqueness to it. And that serves as basically a mouse pad. Now I will say when you go to initially grab this from the side, I do have to reference the tablet display or if we were using a smartphone, the smartphone's display. But once we get a hold on it, we no longer have to look at the display. And you can see we can just move around. Now this application also works without a wearable display. So if you wanna just use it on your device without the wearable display, that's possible. You can see we have a lot of movement here. So this allows us to use the tablet one-handed. Works very well. Now I do have an important point to reference here. Now obviously this application allows us to use a large display one-handed. You can see it works very well. I've got plenty of movement here. But the reason this is critical when wearing a wearable display is because it gives you an idea of where your hand is located relative to the display. And hopefully that means you don't have to rely on the actual display. You can pay more attention to the virtual display. 
I can see everything going on here and I don't have to look at the tablet. I think this is going to be very important if all of this is going to work effectively. Moving on, we have tracker actions. Now, before we get into that, I did take my finger off the display. So I do have to look at the actual display just to find that tracker again. And once it's found, then I can rely solely on that virtual or wearable display once again. So tracker actions, all we have to do is press and hold on the tracker and we get a list of actions that appear on the outside edge of the tracker. We're going to keep this video fairly simple and we're just going to stick with the swipe gestures. So we have left and right and up and down. And I'm just going to swipe left in this video. There we go, works effectively. And if I press it and hold it again, I'm going to swipe right and that returns us back to where we were. So this is very helpful as well. Now the tracker doesn't only perform tracker actions or control the cursor. And look, we did pretty good there. We actually got our finger on the tracker. Now I will say you will see a little dot here in the tracker. That's not a feature in the app. It's actually a feature of the screen recorder. I would love to see this feature in the application though, because it makes finding where you're located on that tracker a lot easier. So if the developer's watching this, add that dot. Please add that dot, that would be very helpful. I think that would improve the functionality. At least make it toggleable. I don't know if that's a word, but where you could turn the dot on or off within the tracker, that could be very, very helpful. It also helps you find the quick actions here. But back to what we were saying, this tracker doesn't only allow you to perform those tracker actions or control the cursor, it also allows you to select things. So I'm going to move to Google News here just to give you an idea of how good this works though. I'm going to start from different parts of the display and we can go to Google News here. You know, and the sensitivity of the tracker can be adjusted. But we can select Google News by tapping on the tracker and that's going to open the app. Now let's go back to tracker actions. Again, we press and hold on the tracker and we can actually do a swipe up that will help us scroll through all of this. We could do so again. Now that's also customizable. You can customize this uh, depending on how you want that to scroll, how much you want it to scroll. Now you can see that I accidentally selected this article, didn't mean to do so. But if we go to the edge here, we also have the back option. I'm going to do that and that brings us back. Again, you don't have to reference the display, even though I did find myself accidentally referencing the display because I have to remind myself mentally that we don't have to rely on the display so much. Once we grab that tracker, we are practically jacked into the wearable display. We only have to reference the wearable display. I also wanna mention that this application does work in landscape mode. So if you've been listening to the video, we did all of this in portrait. Now I will say it seems a bit finicky for the moment. Maybe I just don't know how to operate it very well, but sometimes it's hard to get that tracker to show up when the device is in landscape mode. And finally, we can hide the tracker if we no longer need it, which can be customized with different behaviors, but mine just drags to the side there where it's out of the way. I also want to mention you can have the tracker out and you can scroll manually. That's an option as well. And I'm going to see if I could grab that tracker without looking. There we go. That was a little rough, but I did it. And I'm going to tap on headlines. And then I want to open up the technology section here. And the only reason I'm doing this is I want to demonstrate to you how well this works. Now there is a problem with leaving the tracker out. And it's the biggest con I've had with the app so far. And that is if you leave the tracker out, you might accidentally interact with it. So you can see that we have the tracker floating over this Gizmodo article. And I may wanna tap on it, but if you look at where the cursor is, it's actually hovering over the Android Central article next to it. So if I tap on the tracker, which I would think would be tapping on the Gizmo article, it actually selects the Android Central article. Just something to keep in mind. But I do like this back feature here. That's very helpful. So that is it for today's content. Again, this is all just an experiment. I really wanna be able to use a wearable display 
with a tablet, maybe pair it with a Bluetooth keyboard like the Fossman mini Bluetooth keyboard again you see here, just to improve my mobile computing experience. I don't know if this will be the future, but I'm hoping to get people excited about it, talking about it, because I do have a MetaQuest, a MetaQuest 3 and a MetaQuest Pro, but they're big and bulky. And these look a bit more natural. They look more like sunglasses and they're lighter weight. They're opened in the back so you can lay on your back comfortably while consuming media. Overall, this is a good form factor. So that is it for today's content. As always, thanks for watching and may the universe flow in your favor. And until next time, Leon, check in out.